I think this is approaching more of what I was thinking about. And so the next place to go is here. What I envision now is making this a little bit lighter like it is up here. Hey everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, a place to discover your true authentic voice, learn how to make compelling work, and know how you show up in the world as an artist. So today's video is somewhat of a continuation of our last video where I talked about how fear is a productive tool to help you understand what you truly want for yourself and for a particular painting and whether you need to let go of what's there or stay with it right where it is. So I determined that at this point, while this is quite lovely, that I know deep down in my heart that the surfaces are just still too thin for where I am in my development as a painter. I'm interested in creating depth of surface so that there's this rich experience of deep color and light working together as I blend all these different colors together to create an experience for both myself looking at the painting as well as for those who see the painting. And so in person, there's this diaphanous kind of glow in the ethereal misty color and then that's juxtaposed with this brilliant orange yellow and in last week's video i talked about how i very much like this blue here but that i have to ask myself what do i really want for this painting and what i really want is to have the entire area surrounding this shock of orangey yellow be this misty, diaphanous, glowing, muted color. Which means as much as I love this relationship, rather than bringing this blue all the way over and filling up this entire shape, I need to unify this whole area so that um, this kind of muted color comes over here without losing the blue. So that's going to be an interesting, um, an interesting ride because again, I know exactly what I want to do. So I'm choosing to know, I'm choosing what it is that I want to do without knowing exactly how it's going to happen. So there's a high degree of risk here in losing what I've already got here. So I'm at a place now where I'm ready to take that risk. And again, as I referred to in the last video, you have to wait until you're ready to take that risk. If you know that ultimately, the only way for this painting to get where you want it to go is to take that risk. So I'm gonna take that risk here with you in the rest of this video, and then I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, so starting with white because I want this to be lighter than a mid-tone. Um, and I, I am somewhat doing this from intuitive knowledge. In other words, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to make the color or what the color is going to be until it shows up. So I'm starting with cobalt blue here. And let's see, I think I'm going to add a little cobalt teal to it. And I need some, this is Hansa Yellow Light, which is a cool yellow as opposed to a warm yellow. Add a little bit more cobalt teal in here. And I need a little bit of yellow. And when I mean little, I truly mean little. Because <laughs> I don't want to turn it into green. Um, now I need to dirty this a little bit. So in order to dirty it, 
I add the opposite color, which is orange. Orange is opposite blue. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of orange. See, it's not very much. You can always add more. So let's see. I think I need a little bit more orange. Let's see. Now, when you're not sure you have the color that you want, you take half of it away and you add more to one half of something because oftentimes you are, um, you swing the opposite direction. So I think I want just a little bit more orange in here. I like to mix my own color. I like to mix complicated colors. So it takes longer than if I just got it out of the tube. And I'm gonna add one drop of walnut alkyd oil just to make it a little more pliable in the mixing. And it's spreading more easily now. So you can see the difference between this color and this one here. This is a truer blue, this is more muted. So um, now what I'm going to do is go up here and hold this up against what's already here. And I think it needs a little more orange. So I want it to be, I don't want to put blue on top of blue. I want to put uh, a more complex color on top of it. So now it really is more complex. And I'm gonna hold this up here. And I think that might be good. Now, this isn't enough, so I'm gonna take this and add it in. And since I know I need more orange, I'm gonna put more orange in. And maybe just a little bit more yellow here. And I have more of the color, ultimately, that I'm looking for. <clears throat> and I think now we have to talk consistency because in some instances and probably later on when I have more layers down I would go back I would use this thicker consistency but because I want to spread it over what's there I'm going to add maybe two more drops and this is another kind of feeling your way through by experience of what you get when you use different ratio. So I think, I think because I don't want the blue to entirely disappear, I'm gonna make this a little more transparent. So now I've put maybe six drops in. And once again, I'm gonna hold this up and see, okay. So now it's time to employ my Ruin Filbert technique. So I take my Filbert and press it against my the palm of my hand, which has a glove on it that's protecting it. Or you can press it against the palette and open up the bristles so that you have a nice wide uh, surface to dip into the paint like this. And I'm gonna go in with a circular motion, pressing really hard, getting more paint on it. And go over the whole thing. So the blue is a lot less evident over here. Now there's this blue edge. So 
to work on that edge, I'm going to come in with a flat brush. And sometimes it's important to, to change the orientation of the painting to get to be able to more effectively work with your tools. So it's easier for me to push up into this, like as opposed to the way I was doing it in the other orientation. And now see, I've left this little bit of blue. You see how out of place it looks now with, the, with what is here. So I'm going to cover this up. Well, that achieves a little bit more of what I'm thinking about. By the way, I'm hanging this on French wooden cleats that are a wonderful way to work on the wall with. I have an earlier video that tells you all about how to make the French cleats, what they look like, and um, so you too can work on the wall. So let's stand back and take a look at this. And I think it's better. I think it's a little more unified. And I'm beginning to think, okay, the next few steps might be to come back in with some orange and then blue on top of that. Okay, so now I'm going to put a warm layer over this uh, cooler. Well, there's a warm layer on top of the cool blue. But I'm thinking that if I put sort of an orangey gold glaze on top of this, then I would go back to blue. Um, remember, I know what I want to do without knowing how it's going to turn out. So <clears throat> let's try it and see what happens. And so I'm going to start with CAD Yellow Medium and add a little orange. Mix these two together. And now I want this to be a clearer color because I'm putting it on top of more muted colors. If I put muted on top of muted on top of muted, it starts to get a little too muddy. Okay, so I'm going to add a fair, like five drops here. I want this to be fairly transparent so that it doesn't get rid of the blue altogether. And so I'm going to start out with my ruined filbert and get some on my, on my brush here. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna come in with my rag and rub, rub very hard, rub this yellow into the blue. So it's unifying and a little bit more of this here like that. in, go over the edge a little bit because I'm, I'm going to repaint this eventually, but okay. Well, I think this is approaching more of what I was thinking about. And so the next place to go is here. What I envision now is making this a little bit lighter like it is up here. I'll just put a little bit of what I envisioned for here and we'll save the rest for next time. So I'm going to I use a razor blade to clear off my working area on a glass palette. And 
So I'm gonna start out with the white. And this I think needs to be just a little pinkish. So I'm gonna come in here with quinacridone red. This is very strong pigment. So if I use a lot of it, I'm going to get too much of a pink. And so now I'm going to add a little bit of orange to this to warm it up and get a little less pink. Um, and now it's time to hold it up here and see it's a little too pink. So I'm going to take half of it away, add some more orange into this. And let's see what happens. Mix it a little bit more. Okay. Mm. Well, I think I'm gonna put this down and then put some gray on top of it to push it back. So let's take a little bit more of this and a little bit more and this has a little bit of other color in it so it's going to gray it down just a little bit <clears throat> and well it's allergy season here on the east coast fall october all right so let's see so i have to think okay so i want it to be brighter now and then i will mute the brighter color Make this somewhat transparent. Okay. I'm going to use the same ruined filbert here. <laughs> and there we go. Okay. circular motion here and okay I like that it's beginning to glow a little bit more and so what I'm doing is taking my clues from what is already there and building on top of that. So I have this radiant orangey yellow underneath this creamy gray color, but that's all there is. So now I put this orange, I want to put sort of a creamy gray and then maybe another orange and then more gray so that they're, they're going to be maybe I'm unable to predict how many layers, but so that there's a depth of color experience, uh, which I'm excited about seeing where it goes. So I will be sharing that with you from time to time in future videos. So I hope that this was helpful for you to watch how this all works and to give you the uh, strength the open door for yourself to walk through and let go of what you feel precious about for the sake of the greater good in the ultimate resolution of a painting. It teaches us a lot about the rest of our lives and how we move through life ourselves in all different realms as a human being. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching. I invite you to go to the Whole Artist Mastery website, check out the online courses. If you're interested in going further and deeper in your studies and you enjoy having a one-on-one -on -one learning experience, look at the mentorship programs and see if any of them appeal to you, speak to what you're looking for and sign up for a complimentary conversation. I love working with people in this way and it is truly such a gratifying experience for myself as well as those who are working with me 
to make such great strides artistically as well as personally in those kinds of one-on-one -on -one mentorships. So anyway, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.